whether there's one system of values that appropriately applies to everyone. So is that kind of universality? That's a different question. So it could be that, I mean, I just said that in different historical periods, it could be that different systems of values are more appropriate uh, whatever it is that those individuals in that society think. And it could also be the case that even at the same period in time, different systems of values are appropriate to different individuals. So um, I'm actually myself ambivalent in how to read Nietzsche on that question. Uh, so look, I don't want to hide anything from you. So uh, I do think that Nietzsche thinks that different systems of values are appropriate and beneficial in different historical circumstances. I myself am torn about this lecture. I think he probably does think that, that there, that there are different, um, different, um, different, even in the same society, different people often have different needs are in different circumstances and different values are more appropriate uh, to different people than, than, than other systems of value. Um, which is not to say that whatever it is that a person happens to value is good enough. It does think that they're moving forward. Okay, uh, three essays here. Um, and they correspond to three different elements of the moral system of values. Um, so in the first, um, we get different conceptions of good, different uh, understandings or interpretations of what is good. Um, the first interpretation or understanding of good um, contrasts the idea of good with bad. Um, and this is what he calls the noble system of values. So he thinks that historically this was older, this is the one that emerged first. And uh, I say again, this, the way Nietzsche describes this first system of values, understanding good in contrast to bad in a certain way, that we'll see. This is a non-moral system. This is not yet morality. Uh, he contrasts this with the later development of good in contrast to evil, as opposed to bad. And this understanding of good as the contrast to evil, as opposed to the contrast to bad, this is the moral system of values. OK, so one of the goals here uh, so what, what brings this about, this transition, this transformation from the good-bad system of values to the good-evil, or maybe evil-good system of values, is what he calls the slave revolt in morality. So this is the symbolic transformation of this noble system of values into the moral system of values. Um, Right, and the idea of a genealogy is to trace the origin of the moral system of values. Okay, in the second uh, essay, he talks about the development of morality's understanding or interpretation of duty or right action. And here are the sort of key elements in the development of uh, the moral understanding, morality's understanding of duty, are the ideas of uh, consciousness of guilt or bad conscience. Um, and so, what is it that makes, so, the, the idea of goodness figures into a non-moral system of values also. Somehow there's a transformation as that idea 
uh, is developed or transformed into a moral system of values. Similarly, there's a transition of some pre-moral system of, uh, uh, of values or understanding of duty that brings it into and makes it moral. Um, and here the idea is that um, when um, the ideas of guilt um, or what he calls um, um, bad conscience are introduced, that's generating a moral interpretation. Um, central here are the ideas of punishment and especially the idea of atonement. Um, okay, so the idea is that um, what is um, in a pre-moral or non-moral system simply debt that you, the idea that you should pay your debts, that what you owe is something that um, is required of you. Um, what morality does is internalize this idea of debt into guilt. Um, so once the idea of debt has been internalized into guilt or bad conscience, then we have a moral system of evaluation. Um, okay, so on this story, there's initially maybe a system of economic transactions, um, maybe even a kind of social contract, uh, and the idea of paying your debt is an idea of what you owe, an idea of fairness, or an idea of justice, perhaps. And let me emphasize that this is initially part of a pre-moral system of values. The idea of paying your debts and um, acting uh, in a way that's just and fair. Um, this, too, gets moralized. This gets interpreted in a moral way, um, and we get a moralized sense of justice. Um, that's really not so different than vengeance. Um, so we need to distinguish here, too, justice as used by and interpreted by morality, uh, and justice where I mean, really think where the idea is simply fairness. And we'll see a, a, a really remarkable passage where Nietzsche praises justice. Nietzsche praises justice, maybe in a non-moralized way, but as um, a very, very high um, value. OK, and a third essay um, we get um, a discussion of the ascetic ideal um, and virtues associated with it. Um, and this is part of the story. Part of the story here is how the idea of a debt, in particular now a debt to God, gets transformed into guilt, gets transformed into this moralized notion. Um, so overall, the ascetic ideal, the idea of asceticism, the idea of self-denial, and really for Nietzsche, self-loathing, self um, this is how the pre-moral, noble system of values gets transformed into the moral system of values. Um, and so in general, Nietzsche is offering a criticism of the ascetic ideal. He's offering a criticism of asceticism, a criticism of the moral system of values. Um, but I want to emphasize two points. First is, I sort of alluded to this before, although he thinks that um, the moral system of values and asceticism in particular have become 
very dangerous for us today, he recognizes that it served a very useful purpose in the past. That asceticism, he thinks, is what saved us um, in the past. Uh, it's now, however, become dangerous, um, and it's something that we have to try to overcome. In particular, uh, again, I don't want to hide anything from you, in particular, Nietzsche thinks it's asceticism which has given rise to the will to truth. It's asceticism that's given rise to the commitment that he uh, shares and holds to honesty, to extravagant honesty, which is a hard discipline to achieve. Okay, so the point is that in each of these essays, what we're getting is a, a, a historical story, a genealogy of some element of morality emerging from some pre-moral system of values. Um, okay, and one last point before we actually look at the preface. Um, this is a difficult point to make, clearly. Um, it's a point about asceticism and morality more generally. Um, Nietzsche's criticism of these, his criticism of morality, is not primarily that today we deny ourselves too much or that our conduct today is too moral. That's not really what he's interested in saying. Remember, he thinks that we should be suspicious of people who claim that morality is at the basis of their action. He thinks that uh, mostly that's hypocritical. So he's, 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 his criticism is not that people are too moral and we should stop being so moral. The criticism is of the system of morality sort of as an ideal as an ideology. Um, it's the ideology that need of morality. It's the way of valuing things that Nietzsche thinks is so destructive and harmful to us today. Um, so there's one sense in which the critique that he's offering is of a kind of ideal rather than the practice. On the other hand, um, his uh, on the other hand, his concern isn't so much with the philosopher's construction or of of a philosophical system of values. Really, his concern is with um, how that system of values is lived and taught in an actual society. So the point is not that individual conduct is too moral. And it's not that philosophers cons uh, construct these false abstract systems. Rather, what he's looking at is the effect of the values and ideals that are prevalent in a culture. So how they're actually lived and taught um, and affect people's actual lives based on their real psychology. What, it, what this system of values actually do to real people. Okay, questions about that? Okay, finally we can look at the preface. Okay, uh, section one, the very first thing he says. He says, we're unknown to ourselves, we knowers, and for a good reason, we've never sought ourselves. How then should it happen that we find ourselves one day? Okay, so first point is, uh, whatever you make of the rhetoric of the will to truth and whatever we...